The Torah is a divine work written by God, dictated by God. And therefore, it has multiple levels, multiple layers of meaning. A really good example is the story of Adam and Eve. Everybody knows the story, but here's the rest of the story. The way it's read in its simple literal meaning, God created Adam and Eve. He put them in the Garden of Eden. He said to them, of all the trees you may eat the fruits, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you may not eat from it, for the day you eat from it you will die. This was nine hours after they were created. Well, an hour later, the tenth hour, they ate from the tree of knowledge. Now God comes to Adam and says, you ate from the tree I told you not to eat from? Adam says, she gave it to me and I ate it. God says to Eve, to Chava, what did you do? She says, the snake. <laughs> The snake made me do it. So God says, okay, because you did this, by the sweat of your brow will you make bread, and you will give birth to children in pain. Okay, that's the story. <laughs> it has many moral lessons, but the facts of the story don't really come together very well. Number one, God spoke to Adam and said, don't eat from that tree. An hour later, he ate from the tree. Is there something wrong with God? You can dismiss him an hour later? It's not like Adam wasn't sure that God meant him. You imagine Adam saying, are you talking to me? <laughs> Something's wrong. Question number two, what's wrong with Adam? He was created by God. He had no birth traumas. He didn't have bad friends. He didn't grow up in a bad neighborhood. And he didn't have an evil inclination that tempts you to sin. He didn't have that. What's wrong with him? Then you find out that the tree was actually a fig tree. Come on, how tempting is that? Irresistible? Next question. God says to Adam, the day you eat from that tree, you will die. Was death a threat? Did he even know what death meant? Nothing ever died. That's strange. Next question. What kind of a mixed message is it to say, don't eat from the tree, for the day you eat from it, you'll die? See, it doesn't say, if you eat from it. It says, the day you eat from it, you'll die. Confusing. Next question. God asks him, you ate from the tree I told you not to eat from. He blames her. This is too much corruption, too quickly. He was already so corrupt that he can't even be honest? That doesn't say much for the human race. And then she blames a snake? <laughs> this, this is weird. Then God says, because you did this, here are the consequences. Pain in childbirth by the sweat of your brow. Whoa, whoa, that was not the deal. The deal was the day you eat from it, you'll die. Now God is saying, oh, no, 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 not just die. First you'll suffer, then you'll die. <laughs> like that bumper sticker, life stinks, then you die. That was not the deal. That's on one level. Let's try another level. Back up a little bit. Where did Adam and Eve come from? They were created by God. God fashioned their body out of earth and then breathed a soul into them. Where was that soul? So the story begins. There were two souls in heaven, a male and a female, and God said to them, I'm going to send you down to the lowest of all possible worlds, invest you into a physical body made out of earth, and you're going to elevate that world, the lowest of all worlds, and make it holier and more godly than heaven. Yes, they accepted the mission. Now they open their eyes. They're in the Garden of Eden. God says to Adam, of all the trees you may eat, but not this one. Just picture them sitting there, puzzled. We're supposed to fix this world. Elevate it. All the trees are kosher. They don't need elevating. 
There's one tree that is not so kosher. Something's wrong with it. It needs fixing, but, but we're not allowed to eat it. So what are we doing here? What happened to our mission? Where's our job? And then Adam said, you know, it's quite confusing. Did God, God said not to eat it, or did he say someday you will eat it? Because he said the day you eat from it, you'll die. Eve said, it's not a mixed message and it's not confusing. God wants us to eat from it. He's hoping we eat from it. And Adam said, how do you know that? She said, because our job is in the lowest world and this is not the lowest world. There's a world in which people die, a world of mortality. That's the lowest world and that's where our job is. Adam said, you know, God put us here. Can't be a mistake. So if he puts us here, he must want us here. And Eve said, no, it's not the way it works. God takes you to where your job is, but you have to volunteer to cross that border. He wants us to volunteer. Adam said, you know, makes a lot of sense. And they ate from the tree. Now God comes to Adam and says, you ate from the tree I told you not to eat from. Naturally, we assume that God is shouting. He's angry and he's about to smite somebody. God is not angry. God is marveling. I told you not to eat from it, but you understood that I was hoping you would. How did you know that? Being a new, fresh, pure, innocent soul, Adam said, I didn't know. She knew. So God says to Eve, how did you know? She said, you know what the snake told me? The snake said, when you eat from that tree, you will be like God. You will know good and evil. Well, good and evil, uh, that needs fixing. So God said, that's great. That's exactly what I meant by it's not good for man to be alone because Adam would not have eaten from the tree. So then God says, let me tell you more about this world that you're going down to. It's a mortal world. It also has pain, struggle, disappointment. It's an uphill battle. It's the lowest world. Are you sure you want to try to fix it? They said, yes. If that's what you need done, that's what we will do. That's the story of Adam and Eve. God was not angry. They were not punished because they never committed a sin. Now we refer to that as the sin of the tree of knowledge. But the word that we use in Hebrew is not really translated as sin. The word chet means a step down, demoted. They took a giant step down. There was nothing malicious. There was nothing lustful. It was innocent and it was correct because otherwise the, the vast eternal plan will never be fulfilled. So God was saying, I don't want you to do this, but I need you to do this. Like a king sending his army off to war. If he's a good king, he doesn't want to. He hates it, but it has to happen. What does this tell us about God? He's not sitting up there in heaven, unaffected, invulnerable, untouched by anything that happens to us. And he just watches us to see when he should smite us. That's not, that's not God. God made an investment in creation, like a man getting married. He has to make some sacrifices. He has to give up a lot of stuff. But how else is he going to have a soulmate? So God sacrifices, does things against his own will in order to have this creation, which is a relationship, but it's worth it. If we do this, it will be worth it. And that was Eve's wisdom. She understood this. So you see how a story can be viewed on a simple level, on a deeper level, on a profound level. Every story in the Torah is that way.